and we're going to get into a research coming out of the University of Columbia that talks about robotic neck braces for cancer treatment. So fun fact, head and neck cancer is the seventh most common cancer type in the world. And something like 3% of all fatalities in the world uh, that are cancer related actually come from head and neck cancer. I didn't, I didn't really know about any of this. Um, so what's it? That's not really a fun fact. It's, it's not a fun fact at all. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I didn't, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even know it was a cancer type. I had never heard of it before, but it's pretty serious according to the statistics. Now, something you should know is that like most other cancers, it can spread to different organs, but it can also spread to your lymph nodes. And doctors can actually remove the lymph nodes in your neck to understand how bad is this thing going to spread. So that's great for the patient. They can investigate um, what's going on, how their body's behaving, how the tumor, I mean, how the cancer, how aggressive it is. Um, The downside is that by removing those lymph nodes, you actually end up giving the patients a harder time. They have neck and shoulder pain for years to come, and that doesn't make their lives any easier. So one one of the problems with this is that it's what, what the researchers mentioned is that it's really difficult to characterize the pain and discomfort and the loss of the range of motion that the patients are experiencing. And they talked about that they have some tools to get some measurements, but either their measurements come out to be inaccurate or the system they have takes too much time to set up to just measure the, um, the range of motion of the patient's neck for every single visit. So well, it just doesn't that make makes sense. sense to me. Like, even if I have neck or shoulder pain, it's really hard for me to quantify and, you know, localize exactly where the pain's coming from or how it's affecting my range of motion. I won't be able to tell you that I can turn my head five degrees less than before. I am just telling you my neck and shoulders hurt a lot. Exactly. So I imagine that this team came up with a way to measure, you know, how the body's doing and figure out where that pain's coming from. Kind of. Yeah. So the, the way they did this, uh, they, they created this neck brace. It's a robotic smart neck brace. It's made out of 3D printed parts. It's got inexpensive sensors in it. And what they're doing is that they're having the patients wear this and studying their full range of motion to understand how they work before they have the procedure. That gives them a baseline, something to compare to. This is like the ideal con- condition of how Furbo or Daniel would be moving their heads. Then they get the treatment. And every time they have a visit, they wear that brace again. And the doctors can look at the differences in the range of motion and be able to uh, basically prescribe this very targeted physical therapy that allows them to remove or alleviate some of the pain they're having and be able to get some of that range of motion back much earlier than they could traditionally. Well, that's really interesting. It kind of reminds me. Uh, for about, I don't know if you played high school sports. I or, definitely did not, no. <laughs> but I, I did in high school at least. And one of the things that they rolled out while I was in high school is they were starting to be more conscious about what when concussions happen and making sure we can detect them. And they made us do a benchmark test where that's we really, all these computer that's really games cool. and it just felt like doing a memory game. Mm-hmm. But then after you had a head, head injury, you hit your head or something, they would make you do this concussion test again and measure it against that benchmark to see maybe he does have a concussion, maybe this is how we should treat it, or this is how severe it is. So it seems like they're doing a similar thing, you know, from my own past experience with concussions, but doing the same thing, but for your neck and the range of motion there. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what it is. And one of the things I loved about it is that it's inexpensive, it's 3D printed, which means they can scale this thing pretty easily. Um, they talked about how it's easy to wear for the patient, so they can just kind of put it on during the visit, do their tests, and be done with it without too much setup time. And... Um, I, I know we've talked about digital twins in the previous episodes, whereas you can create a computational representation of your body. And we kind of went into the weeds a little bit and talked about maybe in the future, you could incorporate this with your health app, like your Apple watch and get a full picture of what's going on with your body. While I was reading this, I, I kind of thought about that as well. Like what if this became a little bit sleeker and it could be incorporated into our active wear, like your shirt, um, maybe your shoes, and we could get measurements of the full range of motion of maybe your knees or your back or, you know, within your spine and compare it to a baseline of when you were your healthiest. And maybe like me, you haven't worked out during the pandemic and your body has, you know, significantly declined and you want to see what you got to do to get back to that prime again. Um, I, I think, yeah, I agree. I, I, my, the wheels started turning in my head too, while you were saying this. Great minds like, think alike. That's what it is. If, 
if they prove this the way it has and it works, they could use that as a framework for all sorts of things, not just this you know, traumatic neck injury that happens when you get the surgery to remove the lymph nodes. They could use it to treat all sorts of types of injuries. I'd imagine if you're an elite athlete like these people in the Olympics, you'd be really interested in knowing how your range of motion changes after a certain type of training or a certain injury and having a benchmark using this type of neck brace or any other type of brace to measure how your body's doing that could be really useful information for them in their training and their recovery. For sure. And you know what? I'm going to harp on the 3D printed and inexpensive sensor part again. So if there's any engineers or anyone interested in this field at all, definitely feel free to try this out and let us know how it goes. And if you ever need yeah. any test subjects, let me know because I would be and very down to I try think this out. If you discover anything interesting, we'd be happy to shout you out in the pod and talk oh, about it. Oh, absolutely. Well. Absolutely.